Hello, redesigners. It's Cece from Cece Restyled. Um, today we're here on, what is it, Thursday? Thursday at noon. And we're going to be playing with some redesign with Prima stuff. Surprise! And, um, you know, I like to try to do some different things. You know, you can apply a transfer, or you can stamp, or you can stencil, or you can this or that. I like to do all of it. Mostly because I can't decide between one or the other, so I'm like, eh. But um, also, it makes it fun. You can customize your pieces or your home decor or whatever your project is. You can customize it and uh, make it your own, you know? Like, we all have the same products to work with, but why not put your own little spin on it and uh, re-redesign it, right? So that's what we're doing today. Uh, we've got this dresser in front of us, and big surprise, we're going to be working on its draws. So what we're doing today is, okay, so let me start over. And if you're hopping on, say hello. I'm in Indianapolis. And uh, just say hello and, you know, um, I'll try to catch questions. Good morning, everybody. Well, good afternoon here in EST land. But um, if, uh, you know, if you have questions, drop them and I will try to, hey, everybody. I will try to answer them, but I like to uh, work instead of scrolly scrolling. Um, so I'll try to catch them later if they don't get answered during the video. Okay? So um, we got our draws here. They are painted, primed, painted, um, and uh, I added these pretty moldings. One of my favorites. I love me some keyhole molds because guess what? Keyholes can go on just about anything, right? I mean, I mean, just about anything. So, um... And I mean, you can even like put a little fake key in there and put a little tassel on it. I mean, that would be cool, right? Um, but I mean, you can, they apply in a lot of situations. So they're kind of a must have mold for me, keyholes, you know? So um, anyways, so I'll give you the big picture here. So there's the other two drawers that we're going to be molding. There's a door in the center and there's a row of door, uh, drawers obviously on top, but I can't show you those because um, those have some pre-release molds on them, and you can't see those yet. I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to be working on these drawers, which you can get these moldings. I'm sorry I don't remember what this one's called, but it's awesome. You can use it this way or this way, uh, vertical or horizontal, and uh, get some different looks. But anyway, so those are all molded up, ready to uh, glaze and um, wax. But these drawers are getting a little bit of treatment to them. Of course, they got to be a little bit extra. So let me, why did I just push that in? I'm, that wasn't very smart of me. <sighs> um, so we're going to be molding our drawers, maybe. I really don't want to pull on my molding, but I'm gonna. So that'll show you how well it's stuck or how not well it's stuck, boom. Okay, don't let me do that again. So um, first we're gonna be uh, transferring with uh, Vintage Dream, which is uh, one of the newer uh, transfers. It was a surprise release last month, meaning uh, we didn't really know it was coming and it kind of snuck into my mailbox and I was, um, I had it boom done, I think used on a project that same day, um, but which is cool, I like it that way. I like surprises because then uh, there's no anticipation of waiting for months and however long. You know, I'm not very patient. So anyways, I am digressing. So Vintage Dream is these really pretty um, uh, roses and I don't know what the other flower is. So there's roses and that thing there that's kind of bluish, grayish. I don't know what kind of flower that is, but it doesn't really matter. It's a flower. So these colors go with my client's uh, decor. Um, she has like blush velvet everything and gray everything and silver and uh, you know all this swanky type feeling thing so uh, we're going to coordinate her dresser in here with her existing decor so that's why i chose this one um because her velvets are about that color right there so uh we're going to go ahead and um i'm going to show you the transfer it looks like i have two of them rolled up in this one for some reason trying to save space maybe yeah, it's two of them rolled up in one for some reason, but, um, so let's go ahead and open this one. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is applying the transfers, uh, and then we're going to be stamping over the transfers with some sparkly, sparkly goodness. 
Uh, if you're familiar with the, the transfer called Rose and Rouge, which just made a comeback, thank goodness. It's got some um, semi outlines of like a dull gold or aged gold, and it makes it just kind of sparkle just enough to where it's, um, you know, it's a subtle, subtle thing that adds a lot to the transfer. So we're going to be kind of mm, jumping on that train and adding our own silver uh, accents, outlines. It's kind of like an outline to our flowers just to give them a little spackle, okay? A little bit of spackle. Uh, and yeah, okay, so this is a complete transfer. Three sheets. And the flowers are about yay big, okay? Uh, perfect size for these draws. And look at these. These are a little bit smaller. So I always get people asking me or posting and saying, um, where can I find smaller transfers for jewelry boxes? And I mean, my answer is I use regular old furniture transfers and I just cut them to fit what I want them to, you know, but some are obviously they lend themselves size wise better to think small things like jewelry boxes and trinket boxes and Mm, you know, whatever little smalls you have that you want to create or sell or whatever. And so these have, um, you know, this sheet has this many, <laughs> this many of these smaller transfers. Um, I guess small to medium, but they, these are good jewelry box size. Okay, so um, that one's a little bigger and it would work, but these are perfect. So, <coughs> excuse me. So we're going to, let's see, check out our options real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm gonna put um, kind of a cluster of flowers in a little triangle angle dealio right down here in this corner. And then on the opposite corner up there in the top corner, opposite of the bottom corner, um, I'm going to put another cluster of flowers over there so it'll be kind of like juxtaposed. Right, is that, is that the right word? Um, let's see, and these, okay, just more, more larger flowers which will work for our use, and then some even larger flowers. So um, some transfers, most of you know, but in case you don't, um, most a lot of transfers will come as a design that you piece together. So say this will be three pieces or four pieces or six pieces, and you uh, line them up and piece them together to make one big pattern, or you can anyways, you don't have to. But you know, if you're not really sure um, how to place them, you just follow the, um, you know, follow the leader, you know, or whatever. Follow follow the picture, okay? And you can just line them up like that. But I don't do that. I like to cut them up and chop them up because that's fun for me. And this is one of those transfers that you can cut up, chop up, and use it however you want. There's no, there's no specific pattern. In fact, if you just laid that on the front of a dresser like that, it would look really odd, right? So some transfers lend themselves better to, um, you know, doing whatever you want with them. And some are just, you know, line them up like a puzzle piece them together like a puzzle, I mean, and boom, there you go. So anyways, uh, let's see, I'm going to start, like I said, in this bottom corner, don't let me push that in again. And let's, what I like to do when I'm clustering a group, grouping a cluster of flower, flowers, I like to start with my bigger flowers underneath and kind of, um, I don't know how to say this, I want to get my coverage underneath with my bigger flowers first and then I take my smaller flowers and I place them where I want them where I see gaps or holes or chunks of one solid color that I don't like you'll see what I mean here in just a second so let's go ahead and pick out our first flower and I probably hmm oh I think I'm gonna stick with this guy here he's calling my name I'm probably gonna use minimal of this bluish deal gray and more of the blush and light uh, creamy type flowers uh, but you know we'll see how it goes I never really have a plan for exactly where I'm gonna place things it's just kind of like what does that need in that little spot or what looks good there or what doesn't look good there and uh, we just go from there we we uh, we use our instinct okay and we uh, we place where we feel you know it's gonna look the bestest okay so, uh, let's see. Any questions off bat? I know I haven't really said a whole lot to uh, warrant any questions, but you never know. Okay, no. Lots of highs. Hello, hello. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the corner. Um, I'm not going to start in the very, 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 very corner 
the reason why I'm not starting in the very, very, very corner is because what I want to do, okay, so if I did start down here in the very tippy tip of the corner, um, I would not be able to build out as easily onto here without covering up what I've already laid down. If I start out here just a bit and kind of like lay down where I, how much coverage I want to get, then I can place the smaller flowers in here to fill it up without covering up my, you know, what I've already put down. Does that make sense? So, um, uh, you just kind of want to place them by thinking ahead, I guess, for for shadowing where you may place things. So I like this placement here. Now I got to figure out: Do I want this to spill up on the top, or do I want to kind of pack it off right there? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hmm, that's a good question. Maybe we uh, maybe we don't. Maybe we just kind of move it down here so it all can fit on one drawer. Um, the cabinet piece of this is only primed. It has not been painted yet, so I'm not going to transfer it. Um, sometimes I will take my transfers and go, you know, over the drawer, continue it onto this little crossbar, and then spill up onto the, the drawer above it. Um, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll just do this drawer and this drawer, keep it clean, cut, simple. Um, I'm, I'm, on, I'm honestly not sure what I'm going to do in this situation. I may have to go back after I paint and add some transfer in there, but we'll see how it looks. We'll see how it looks. All right, so I'm thinking this is pretty good. I like that placement. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place this best I can in that position. Try to remember how I had it. You can mark off with a pen on this backing paper you know, where you had it to, to line it up, but I mean, it's not really that imperative that it be exact, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. All right, so how about like here? Yeah, that looks good. So when you're working with bevels on your drawers, see the beveled edge, this little um, lip, I guess, frame, lip, beveled edge. I just, I, I apply my fat, flat part of my transfer first, so let's see, where's my stick? Um, you can use the stick that comes with every tube of transfer, or you can get a fancy schmancy uh, little doohickey here, transfer tool, and it's got a big side with a little hook on it for these bevels, perfect to go around the edges and stuff, or little size for little smaller areas. Uh, I'm just gonna use my stick. They both work well. Um, they both work just fine. Some transfers, the bigger one's easier, and, and some transfers, this little stick is easier. Like, um, big areas, I really like to use the, um, the plastic transfer tool, but for little tiny pieces, um, or designs with little small pieces, like never-ending stories, all these little tiny separate words, I like to use this guy. Um, I feel like the smaller uh, surface right here, just, it gives you a more concentrated force, if that makes sense, onto your transfer. And never in story, that sucker is a little hard to apply. I'm not, uh, you know, it, it's a workout getting that one on. Um, so I like to use this guy. My wooden stick for him. But um, So I am applying this directly onto my paint. You don't want to apply it over wax that has not been cured for 30 days or over. I mean, I learned that the hard way because I thought I was going to be cute and save time. Um, I didn't. And it, and it was, it was this fiasco. I learned several lessons on that project and, um, it has never seen the light of day since. Thank goodness. But, um, I also learned on that same project that, um, okay. So a don't wax your, don't try to put a transfer on wax. He just applied and B, um, uh, don't skip on your prep either. Uh, if it's a, 70s plastic chunky carved end table um, that you know it's gonna need an adhesion primer and let that adhesion primer dry because if not you paint it and you transfer it and then your paint comes up with the transfer when you peel off this backing paper because you didn't prime the plastic I mean I've heard you know I've heard that happens so don't you know when you are when you know you're gonna be transferring a piece of furniture uh, you need to really plan ahead and think about what material you're going to be transferring to. Um, ah. Are you sanding, priming, uh, you know, what kind of paint? Um, things like that. 
you know, I know that sometimes it's an afterthought, like, oh, you know what, this needs a transfer, and that's fine. But before you apply it, consider how you've prepped, um, your dry times, um, what you may have done that could, you know, interfere with the application of the transfer, things like that, you know. <coughs> so, I think we've got this flat part done. So now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to go with the top bevel first. See how this is kind of tight right here? I'm just going to cut it. It's going to cut it, relieve some of that tension. And I'm just going to roll this into my little bevel here. Um, see, so what would happen if I just slapped my transfer on there and tried to get it just to stick right off the bat is it would stick, but this would be a little tight, you know, it would be tight over this groove. And so when I went to stick it in the groove, it would just crack. You know what I mean? It would crack and break, and then you would have a, um, then you would be crying, oh my gosh, I cracked my transfer, what do I do? So, um, instead of just slapping it on there, you want to just kind of coax it into the little groove here, okay? You got to sweet talk it. Hold its hand. It's okay, little guy. We got you. We're in there. You're not going to break. You're not going to crack. And I think it's working. I think my sweet talking is working. So, we're just going to go ahead and finish on up there roll it up the top and get that right on there you can cut it with a sharp knife boom like flush with that top but i like to roll them over you know when they open the drawer they're going to see that just a nice little finishing touch so um we've got a little bunching here from you know this corner see that bunching there what happens um what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my scissor to so I can push it on there and apply it like this but it's going to create this big fat crease and wrinkle that's going to be hanging off of my transfer. So I'm just going to cut it around this leaf to release some of that tension. And then I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, hold on. I'm actually going to cut this leaf just like this. Okay. Bear with me here. You see why I'm doing this? Wait, can you see? Okay, so I'm going to put it on there. And then I'm going to peel back. This is Advanced Transferring 101, okay? You don't have to get this fancy, but I cannot stand wrinkles in my transfer. So uh, we're just gonna um, pull that down a little bit. Actually, let's go ahead and stick this on first. Let's go ahead and stick that on, okay? And then we're going to apply. Can you see? I can't transfer in cameraman at the same time. Okay, so sweet, we got our little leaf down. I was not gonna get this into it on this live, but you know, here we are. And I only have one hand. Okay, so now that that little part that was kind of um, bunching up is applied, we can, uh, oh, come on. Now we can fold over this side, you know, so that it will apply down and not wrinkle up. Does that make sense? When you're going around a corner and you try to bunch it up, I don't know, if, you're, if you are a sewer or a quilter or anything like that, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever wrapped a Christmas present, you know what I'm talking about. When you go around the corner, it bunches up. So we just wanna cut that little area to alleviate the wrinkle and see it's all green it's all a leaf so um you know if it overlaps it's you're not going to see that um does that make sense i hope that makes sense anyways it is a um little little tip and trick for you ocd transferring 101 yeah i'm the professor of that course okay so moving right along we're gonna go ahead and wrap this side. We're gonna push it into the groove and apply it into our little beveled groove there so we don't get any cracking. Then, oh, then we're gonna apply it here. And then we're gonna go around the corner. And I'm actually gonna cut off that little tiny last bit that's, instead of wrapping it around to the back of the drawer face, I'm just gonna cut it off. Um, all right, so that's on there, and we've got to go down here, so we're just going to finish applying. I promise you, all of these flowers we're placing are not going to take me this long. I'm just trying to walk you through any uh, things that might come up, any, uh, you know, forks in the road you may have to make a decision to deal with. All right, so now we're going to go and... Um, we're going to go and push our bottom of the transfer into the bottom groove. Bottom little bevel there. See that? I don't know why that is so satisfying to me for some reason. 
doing that. Okay, and then. Okay. Mm, let's go ahead and just rub on that flat part. Go around here to the bottom. So it'd be a lot easier if my drawer didn't keep moving, but I don't want to push it in because, well, then it's hard to get out and I can't go around underneath. There we go. All right, boom. Now we're going to pull that up. See this little area, this little sheet part, part of the sheet that's going over the mold. It's hard to lay flat because my mold is in the way. So what we're gonna do after we cut this excess off and apply it to the bottom. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull this part up, okay? We're not done applying the whole thing, so we're just gonna pull up part of it in order to um, release some of the slack over here so I can lay that piece down easily, okay? You don't wanna force it down. When you start forcing things is when you start getting cracks and wrinkles and things you don't want. So instead of peeling this all the way up, I'm just gonna release that tension. And now I can roll this down and apply that little less guy here. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that we are good to go. Nice and slow, good to go. Nice and slow, we're good to go. Nice. Oh, there we go, boom. So now I'm just gonna take my finger or my palm or both, whatever fits on your little area better. I like to use my palm for big flat areas. And then obviously you can just use the pad of your finger to get down into little grooves. Sometimes um, I'll take a, a lint-free cloth and I'll use that on my finger to go around, you know, depending on the situation. But usually I just use my finger. But you wanna pop any bubbles. You don't want air bubbles. That is a um, disaster waiting to happen. You don't, you know, you wanna smooth out any wrinkles. Yada, yada, yada. You want it to be smooth, okay? No bubbles, no wrinkles. Nice and smooth. Smooth. All right, there we go. Okay, so that's it. I promise it won't take that long to apply a couple more. And then we'll get to the stamping, okay? We'll start a stamping. Any questions? <coughs> uh, Kat, yes. Um, it is life-changing, so just be prepared that once you stop, um, you will, um, once you start, you won't wanna stop. Um, yeah, you can apply transfers over wax, but it needs to be cured. It needs to be cured, it won't stick to not cured wax. That's just um, a fact. So some transfers, or some waxes take longer to cure than others, but most of them take about 30 days to safely, to be safely, you know, cured to put a transfer on. I mean, but whatever, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You can put it on whatever you want <clears throat> um, and see what happens. Or you can be safe and wait till it's cured. Okay, sorry, I get a little obsessive about my wrinkles and bubbles. Okay, so I'm just gonna slap a few more on here so that we can get to move in. I like this little rose right here. He may be a perfect candidate for right there. I don't know yet, we'll see. How about, let's bring some more blush tones to this little corner here. Those are a little big for the, hmm, how about? Okay, uh, these, these, mm -hmm. so I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe um, one of these, okay, mm, God. okay, so many options, oh. one of this, uh-huh, this guy right here, coming up off of that guy, I think, I think, I think, will be great, it'll work fantastic, famously. And put that to the side. Okay, so the transfers are um, for the last few releases. They've been being they've been made by a new manufacturer. If you haven't noticed, and I've seen. <coughs> excuse me, I'm talking too much, and my throat gets dry. I've seen a few comments about the backing paper being a little looser these days, which. Um, I've complaints. I've seen complaints about it, and to be honest. 
The backing paper is not supposed to stick to the transfer. It's, it's just supposed to protect the adhesive. So yes, it is loose. It's supposed to be, and that's a good thing. Um, but the complaint is that the, it comes off and they stick to themselves. And I'll be honest, I'm guilty of uh, almost letting that happen or letting it happen because I'm trying to work quickly, but you just need to be careful. So when you open up and unroll a transfer, um, you want to be very gentle with it. You wanna be careful with it because um, it is a possibility that this backing paper could flip up and then your transfer will touch itself and stick. So let me show you. So this little part here, which is taped on at the moment, this part here comes loose and then the transfer sticks to it itself. And then at that point, there's no saving it. There's no salvaging it. You're just kind of at a, at a loss. So um, to prevent that, when you take your transfer out of the tube and you are preparing to use it, you just want to be... Um, you want to be gentle with it, okay? You want to unroll it carefully, okay? So uh, that that's really just kind of, that's just kind of how it is, you know? Like, not everything is, how do I say this? Some things, you know, you just, you got to be careful with them. Um, so they don't do that. that. That's all I'm trying to say. And I'm always in a hurry. I'm guilty. I'm always trying to hurry because I have so many things to be doing and deadlines and all of these things, but um, I find it when I'm hurrying is when I make the most mistakes and then it ends up taking longer. So it's a catch 22. I hurry and then I end up costing myself more time and money usually um, because of my hurrying. So mm, this is just a little, uh, little life lesson for you. Slow down. Uh, the, what do they say? Slow and steady wins the race, right? Slow and steady wins the race. Okay, so we're transferring into our little groove there, rolling it up. All right, so there we go. We got our groove done. Now we're gonna do this side. I'm gonna roll it right around the groove, nice and tight. I like to use my fingernail, you know, and make sure it's really in there sometimes. And then we'll just roll on the flat part here with our little lip. And then roll it right on around back. Um, once we're done with the transfer, uh, you want to seal it <coughs> with a water-based sealer or clear wax or whatever wax you want. Um, you Do you have to seal the transfer? Well, no, technically you don't have to do anything, but um, you want to you want to seal it because uh, there is a chance that if you don't, it'll dry out and crack and peel and start rolling up and then, you know, you no more transfer, you know. Um, so you wanna seal it, especially if it's something you want to, uh, want to see last for a long time or you're selling to someone and, and you don't want them calling you and saying, hey, what's going on with my piece I bought from you a couple months ago? So you wanna seal it. Um, and I know I teach classes about I teach classes where transferring is one of the steps in the project we do. And so I don't seal in that class because there's just not time for it. But I do tell people when you get home, seal it if you have some sealer. If not, and you want to keep this, get some sealer. Um, but I don't always seal mine because they're just project demos. They're, you know, things that I'm demoing, so I don't keep them. But I do keep them. Um, I don't use them, but I keep them. And I've noticed that of the ones I haven't sealed, about half of them, at least a little over half of them, have started to dry out and crack, and after they crack, then they start rolling back and peeling, um, and that's after just maybe a, uh, maybe a month or so. So um, I'm not saying if you don't seal it, it's gonna crack. I'm just saying it's got a 50/50 chance of cracking, and um, you know you want to preserve your hard work as best you can. Okay, so we're gonna finish putting this one on and although I am gonna go back and put some more flowers, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next step which is adding the bling. We're gonna add some bling bling to our flowers here, okay? And that's gonna be by way of decor stamp. And I love the decor stamps. Um, I, I like stamps a lot. Uh, this design that we're going to be using, I have not used. It's brand new, I haven't even opened it yet. So mm, my idea <laughs> for what we're gonna be doing is uh, working in my head. It works in my head, okay? So we're gonna see how we can make it work in real life 
which is a lot of what we do, right? Solving problems, like puzzles. Each, each piece of furniture I, I work on, I look at it like I'm solving a problem, okay? That's what design is to me, anyways. Solves a problem. So our problem is we don't have any bling bling on our flowers. The solution is, mm, this solution we're gonna go with is clearly aligned decor stamps. You know what I'm saying? All right, so last little bit here, and then I will move right along to the stamping. So there's a couple ways that you can apply um, or use the stamps, okay? So there's <clears throat> the ink pads that you can get from Redesign. The ink pads from the Redesign line are semi-permanent, okay? They are not, they can be reactivated or smudged, um, but, you know, they're metallic, they're pretty. Um, you want to probably do them as a last step so you don't seal them and reactivate them. Um, those are the stamp pads that come with the, re that are part of the redesign with Prima line. Uh, the other stamp pads are the, I think, Color Philosophy. They're also from Prima, but they are part of the Color Philosophy line, not redesign. So Prima is the, the company that makes all these fun things. They have individual lines underneath the name Prima. You know, it gets a little confusing, but think of it like a family tree, okay? Prima is the uh, mat matriarch here, and all of the, you know, ancestors, or all of the, um, oh my gosh, why am I spacing? All the little uh, offspring is their lines, okay? And Color Philosophy inks are permanent. However, they're not, that I know of, metallic. So, you know, you just weigh your options and um, what you're looking for for your project and you decide. Um, so ink pads is one way. The other way, which my favorite way, is applying paint to my stamp and stamping on my design with paint. The reason I like it so much is because um, I don't have to choose a predetermined stamp color. I can choose whatever color I want. Whatever paint color I want, I can stamp on. So that's, that's the reason I like to do paint. Um, it's just, hmm, opens a little bit more doors, I guess you could say. All right, we're peeling, we're peeling, we're peeling, we're peeling, we're peeling, we're peeling. <sighs> sometimes this part is really satisfying and sometimes it's really um, anxiety ridden. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not much of a gray kind of gal, to be honest. I don't typically paint just gray just for S and G, but like, I love this gray. And um, with these muted kind of, uh, mm, muted like pastel -y type colors, I dig it. Okay, so I'm smoothing on, making sure it's nice and adhered with my Palm, the pads of my finger, no bubbles and wrinkles, heck no, they need to go. Okay, so on there. now we get to do some stamping, hopefully. I'm crossing my fingers that this idea works out because um, I don't know, see? I just think it will. But I'm not scared because if I don't like it, it's just paint and transfers and I can just sand it off and redo it if I really want to. But I, I have high hopes. I'm very confident that our idea is gonna work out and be fabulous. So like I said, I'm gonna continue building up those flowers in the bottom corner later, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on. All right, uh, the, <clears throat> the clearly aligned decor stamps that we are using uh, today is Sweet Blossoms, okay? Who doesn't love them? Some Sweet Blossoms. So like I said, I've never used this one before, but it's very intriguing. So it's, it's a bunch of different stamps, okay? And you can combine them to create different types of build your own flowers, okay? So there's little recipes here. So there's three parts, parts one, two, and three, okay? You can see obviously one is the background and then you build up the details on top of it. Whatever colors you want, see? Look how pretty that is, isn't that neat? Um, <clears throat> so the way I'm seeing this is or, well, real quick, the little recipes at the bottom are the combinations you can add together to make different looks. So one, two, and three. One and two. One and three. Or two and three. You know, you build them up how you want. 
So the way I'm looking at this is our transfer is one, okay? For let's just say our transfer is one. It's that base background to the flower. So we're gonna be using two and three um, to add layers onto our flower of metallics, okay? So in theory, huh, in theory this is gonna work, okay? So uh, bear with me. If it doesn't, you know what? We're gonna um, either, huh, in theory this is gonna work. If not, we're gonna make it work or, you know, if I have to scrap it, I will, but I don't usually ever scrap anything. Everything is salvageable. So when you're working on a project and it's just not going exactly how you want it, just take a break from it and uh, realize that not everything is beautiful. If some things turn ugly before they turn pretty, okay? So just because it's not going exactly how you thought doesn't mean you can't make it, you know, turn around and make it perfect exactly how you want it. Um, yeah, you can wait till the next day, but, um, they're still not permanent. So even if they're dry, they can reactivate with the top coat. So that's what I'm saying. You might want to do them last, your stamps last. I suppose you could probably spray seal them, but not, that doesn't apply to everything. Spray sealer does not apply to everything. But, you know, and I honestly, um, I haven't tried that. I haven't tried spray sealing it, so... Um, <clears throat> the, <laughs> um, the ink pads I have for redesign, um, I have a couple colors, but like I said, I, uh, I've used them, um, but I like to use the paint because there's more color options. That's all. That's all. And I know it's permanent and I know I can seal it and I'm not knocking the, uh, ink pads at all. So I'm sorry if it's coming across that way. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying like, they're not for every purpose. Okay. They're not for every purpose so like that you know I'm just saying so here is how they come the stamps come on these in between these little acetate sheets see and that protects it so you want to hang on to those don't don't throw them away so what we're gonna do is um, go ahead and peel away this okay we're gonna save that for later and let's see we've got let's look at it from this way I think this is a wait, no this is a front way okay so we've got some leaves here, which that could be fun, right? Um, and here is our piece. Let's see. B1. Good lord. Okay. Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> so C1 and A1, those are both base pieces, I guess you would say. The bottom pieces, the background, the base to your flower. Okay? Remember what I said? This is, I'm considering this my base, okay? What's already here? Which means I need... C2 and C3, and A2 might work, we'll see, and B2 might work, we'll see. So we don't need the solid ones. That's what our transfer is supposed to be doing. Um, oh, I have an acrylic block <clears throat> that I can use to, um, let's see, let's just for example, peel off C2. So these are um, rigid enough, we can use them without an acrylic block behind them but they're also flexible enough that we can go around things that are curvy. Uh, I have an acrylic block somewhere I was gonna use, but I you don't, know, oh, I know where it is. It's in my utility sink drying um, for three weeks now, two weeks now. But, so we're just gonna press it on with our hands like this. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. We're gonna add our metallic accents on the flowers. So, you know, again, if you're just hopping on, I'm. I'm referencing Rose and Rouge. So it's a really pretty floral uh, transfer with chunks of, you know, clusters of flowers similar to this one. And it's got little semi-incomplete outlines of gold, just as accents. So that's what I'm using as my inspiration here. And hopefully it works. So I think I'm gonna hang on to this one. This one seems like it will work. And I think this little guy here will probably work. It looks like the center, uh, what are those called again? In the center of a flower, the... Um, Oh my gosh, I've been having so many brain farts lately, you guys. The, st uh, the center of the flower. And um, obviously I want some leaves, come on. Oh, here's another little center of the flower, see that little guy? So I'm just gonna pull off all the ones we could possibly use here. And that's kind of the same. I like this little flower. I didn't want most of that. Ooh, I like this leaf. Oh, I like this leaf actually better. Do we like that leaf? Let's grab them both. Okay, so I think for now we'll start with those. 
Yeah. We'll see if, see if we need these later, but... Okay, so uh, we're going to get um, jiggy with our stamps here in just a second. Hmm. So I'm not using the stamps for this project. I am using paint. So I got my paint roller to apply my paint to the back of my stamps. Little tray. I usually use a paper plate. And then I realized I bought a, a, these in bulk. Last night I found them and I'm like, hmm. Um, I got a whole stock of these and I've been using paper plates. I forget what I buy sometimes. I know you can relate. I buy things for use and I totally forget about it. You know what I'm talking about? I know that happens to you. This is a redesign with Prima br roller brush, okay? I love this thing for stenciling. I love it for striping and I love it for stamping. Stencil, striping, stamping. Say that 10 times fast. I like it because it's a low profile foam, right? So it doesn't get all goopy. It's got a nice long handle and uh, it's just really great for uh, minimizing that goopy mess that seeps underneath your stencils or your tape when you're striping, okay? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. All right, let's get you in here a little bit further. Can you see? Can you see? Um, all right, so let's start with our big... Mm, let's start with our big daddy here. You wanna? Okay, so... Um, I am going to point you down, move my leg out of the way, I guess, and, uh, okay, boom. So, yes, I should probably have down some craft paper, cardboard, or a tarp, but, you know, this floor is already very, uh, characterized with my paint splatters, so we're just gonna roll with it. And, um, let me start my paint real quick. You can use, uh, water-based paint over the transfers. I would not use an oil-based paint. Uh, metallic, you know, um, adhesive. You can use adhesive with the stamps and apply gold leaf or gold foil or silver or whatever, foil or leaf. Um, uh, you can use the adhesive with the stamps and add mica powders, glitters. So basically you do the same thing as we're about to do now, but you want to use um, adhesive instead of paint, like a foil adhesive or uh, sizing, uh, size it's sometimes called. Size is just a fancy word for glue. TBH. All right, let me make sure I got this nice and mixed up. So I like to use metallics on my stamps because it just makes them really bling bling, okay? And this right here that you're looking at, this goodness here is um, Stardust from Paint Couture, the one and only metallic there ever should be on earth little combination of silver and gold uh, hues. So, um, you know, I can never decide silver or gold, silver, or gold. okay, that's not true. I like to go with gold, but sometimes I consider silver. And so I say, okay, let's have a happy medium and do silverish gold. And there, that's how I use silver. Okay, so let's go ahead and pour a little bit of paint into our tray, uh, which always gives me anxiety, pouring paint because it's so messy. Ooh, let's go ahead and clean that bad boy off there. All right, so, Pour a little bit of paint into your tray. Oh God, I'm so terrible at this. I'm so bad at pouring paint, you guys. I'm like a child with paint. Oh God, that's enough. I'm like a child pouring paint. Okay, so we'll clean that up in a minute. We got our pretty paint and our roller. You can use a paper plate. This, this roller brush actually comes in a set with a little acrylic plate for pouring your um, paint onto, and it works fine, but it's, uh, <clears throat> you see how I pour paint? So I would hate to use the acrylic, the, the acrylic plate and it just make a big mess. And I don't know where it is, I don't know where I put it. But it comes with that and four of these white roller heads, the foam heads, you can wash them and reuse them. They are reusable. <clears throat> Excuse me, so I'm loading up my roller brush and I'm trying to load it up as good as I can but not so much that it's dripping off or, or clumping, you know what I'm saying? Like it should be, it should be um, really squished up in there in that roller. You really want it to be sucked up in your foam. You know, like sponged up into the foam so it's not drippy. Okay, load it up, but don't, uh, not drippy. Okay, so we're just gonna roll onto the back of our stampy stamp gently, gently. And this would be where a acrylic, um, the acrylic <coughs> block would be 
it would be ideal right now because this stamp is kind of little and I'm a little clumsy, so that, that's where it would come in handy. However, it's not necessary. I just got to be careful, okay? Just got to be a little careful. And, okay, so I'm going to grab a little shop towel just in case I make a mess and put point you back up. So what we're going to do is we're going to plop it right on um, that flower because this is like, we'll just call it the middle, you know, the middle layer of your build your own flower stamp set. And this kind of matches, right? I mean, it's got those crazy fun leaves um, that are obviously not a rose. So we're just going to go with it. We're going to place it. And this is going to be, this is not going to be ideal since my drawer is not really pushed in. So it's going to be kind of hard to push on there, but we'll do the best we can. This is where the stamp might, the uh, block might come in handy. And Prima sells a stamping block, a couple different sizes for you to use. Uh, you can also get them at the craft store. Or, you know, if you're thrifty, you could just use a chunk of 2x4 cut off and use that as your block. Or a brayer. You can use a brayer. I hate my brayer because the little rolly thing always falls out, so I don't even use it. But, you know, whatever. I'm sure there's better brayers out there. So now that we've got that flat part stamped on, remember our little uh, beveled edge that we have to contend with? And we're going to try to manipulate around that by pulling up our stamp. Oh, gosh. I might have put too much paint on there. Oh. I might have put a little too much paint on there. Because it's not very... Oh, we'll let it dry and then we'll... Let's let it dry and then we'll... I'll zoom you in so you can see it. it a lot of metallic paints, as they dry, they're a little more spackly. Spackly. Um, so let's go ahead and do a leaf next. We're going to try to go right here along this leaf so that it's just a little sparkly leaf next to the regular green leaf. Um, okay, I'm going to roll that again. Let that dry. And I'll show you up close from an angle and from the front how it's just a little sparkle. Okay, so that's going to dry. It's a little sparkle, a little bling bling on your transfer. It's not stealing the show. It's just a little accent, you know, a little nice little accent. <clears throat> and that's what we're going for, okay? We're not show stopping with our bling bling, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, <sighs> clean up this little edge, okay? Okay, so now we're going to take our leaf and kind of just place it, you know, next to our other little existing leaf. And it's funny how they look like very similar types of leaves. I, um, this drawer is going to drive me nuts moving like this probably should have drilled my hardware holes so I can just push it in, but I don't know what hardware I'm using yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and press it down firmly. You want to be careful. You want to be firm and make sure that all of the surface touches. However, if you push too hard, it will start to kind of, um, what's the word? Squ uh, you know, it'll move around underneath you if you press too hard. So you just want to do firm, but not with all your strength. You know what I mean? No wiggling. As little wiggle as possible, okay? No wiggle, wiggle. And now we want to pull up carefully so we don't smudge it as best we can. And there's our little silver stardust, little silvery stardust leafy guy, okay? Oh, that's going to be so pretty when it dries. I don't know. Can you see that? Okay, hold on a second. Let me try to move you around here. Um, so these metallic accents don't show up so amazing on camera but I will zoom you. Can you see that? Can you see the sparkle or is it just my camera that it doesn't look very sparkly on camera? Can you see? Is that coming up sparkly or no? And then there's that little guy. Let's see if we can do it from this angle. Oh gosh. And then, um, sorry. My camera, camera woman ship is not so great. Can you see that or no? I can see it in real life. I'll take some pictures. My, um, on the live screen, it's darkened, so I can't tell how you really see it. All I can see it on my screen, and it doesn't, you can't see it on, on my screen. So I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll post some pictures of it once it dries up close so that you can get a better idea of the, the accent sparkle, okay? And you can do this with gold, copper, you know, glitter, mica powder. It doesn't have to be this particular metallic but my customer wanted a silvery color and <laughs> i wanted a gold color so i'm giving her 
silver with a little hint of gold, which is stardust. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna try one more little area of maybe leaf, hmm, leaf or, let's actually try, try this little middle guy. Uh, did, <laughs> did we remember what the middles are called? I feel like a moron right now because I cannot remember the middle of a flower is called, uh, I feel like I'm having brain farts all week long. Anyways, let's try our little middle of our flower. I know that's not 100% accurate on a rose, but um, let's try this one down here. We're gonna try it for fun, for S and G. And I, uh, let's see, we're gonna rolly, rolly, rolly. Rolly, 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 rolly. See these little tiny ones? It, it's, it probably helped to have a block on these little tiny guys if you're as clumsy as I am, which is pretty clumsy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just smack dab it right in the middle of our <clears throat> rose. Anybody remember what the pistol, that, see I was gonna say piston, and I knew that wasn't right. The pistol, yes, that is the center of the flower. Oh. Okay, so we're gonna just firmly kind of press it on without moving it too much. The thing about stamps is that uh, they give a kind of aged or, you know, distressed type look. Um, unlike a stencil where you, you want it to be as crisp, as clean as possible. I like the stamps that are a little more forgiving. You have a more aged, grungy type, type feel. All right, so there's our little sparkly center. And once, once it dries, you'll see the sparkle. And I'll, I'll take a closer, oh gosh, this thing keeps turning. I will take a close-up picture and post it so you can see it um, a little bit better, the sparkle, but hopefully you can see some of it. Just enough to make it um, fun and spackly, okay? We want a little fun and spackly, but I don't want to go overboard. <clears throat> I don't want it to be too gaudy, and I still have to sparkle up all my moldings. So the drawers and door that you don't see, those are molded up to the max, so these are minimal. Um, the other ones are molded all day long, so they're gonna have a lot of sparkle. So I was, you know, I wanted to keep it a little subtle on the flowers, but just tie them in with a little bit of sparkle themselves. So um, let me finish up this corner, and I'll post you how it goes once I finish the transferring and the sparkling, and um, give you a little update because the rest of it I won't be able to show you for a month because I have to wait. I have to I have to not post the rest of this for a whole month. That's not fair, right? That's not fair. But, you know, it'll be worth it because they're cool, cool designs that are coming out. So, anyways, uh, I will go back through and see if there's any questions that I may have missed, probably missed. But you all have a great, uh, we got a weekend coming up. So, have a great weekend and I'll see you next Thursday right here at uh, noon EST in the redesign with uh, Prima Group um, on Facebook. Bye.